Alright, so what's going on you guys? It's your boy Rebirth here to get you prepared for what is going to be a very entertaining next few weeks and next few months for Bleach. I'm going to be giving you a lot of content starting from today because today in Japan, the first screenings for Thousand Year Blood War episodes 27 and 28 happened and I want to make a video talking about the fallout from that event. Don't worry, I'm going to avoid any major spoilers here because I do want to keep the excitement and interest going into the anime itself, but um, I will be giving you the reactions of, of some of the Japanese fans, and I'll be talking about some of the statements made by Kubo, Taguchi, and co. at the event itself. So if you enjoy the content, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and make sure you stick around because there's going to be great stuff coming down the horizon. Alright, so let's get started here. The Bleach Thousand Year Blood War Twitter re uh, revealed this poster of Ichigo and all of Ichigo's major villains across Bleach, starting with Byakuya into Grimja, Okiora, Aizen, Ginjo Kugo, and Yuha. And again, they continue to tease us for what the possibility of the 20th anniversary project is going to be. Is it going to be a remake? Is it going to be a movie compilation? Is it going to be something completely different? We don't know. But yet again, we're given a callback to OG Bleach, but in a Thousand Year Blood War updated format. And uh, I'm very interested to know what we're going to do with this. So let me know down below what you want this project that they're teasing to be. I know that it's a very difficult conversation to have because it begs the question, should Bleach get a remake? Does Bleach need a remake? And you'll find that people have different opinions on this. On one side, some people say the Bleach 2004 OG Bleach, it wasn't perfect, but my goodness, for its time, it did a damn good job at adapting Bleach. Others say that Noriyuki Abe took a lot of liberties with the Bleach story and perhaps a linear, streamlined version that only focused on the canon material without any extra weird stuff from the director shoehorning his own agendas into it would be necessary to increase Bleach's fandom and so on and so forth. I'm not quite sure where I stand. I'm torn on the idea and I'll explain why I'm torn on the idea so please let me know what you think down below. But for me, here's my stance. Any decision that allows Bleach to remain in the public limelight for longer is going to be good for the fandom. And so I'm not going to complain of the idea of a Bleach reboot or, the, or a Bleach remake because as long as it means Bleach is still there in the public eye doing stuff, it means Bleach is not going to die. Bleach is still going to be relevant. So that's good. On the flip side, I wonder how realistic of uh, an idea it is to ask Piro, who's barely able to do Thousand Year Blood War, to go do all of Bleach all over and to do it well. It feels a little bit far-fetched. Like, if it's not going to do better than OG Bleach, I don't want it done at all. At the same time though, I don't want to complain about getting more Bleach more often because it means Bleach is going to remain in the public in the public eye and that'll be good for the fandom moving forward. So I'm torn on the idea. Overall, let me know what you think down below. But anyway, let's talk about the screening itself. So. One of the most consistent feedbacks that we've gotten from the Japanese fans who went to the event is that they really liked the opening. I'm very happy with the opening song that Kubo chose. I think opening one was fine, opening two was not good, opening three sounds like it's going to be a banger, and I'm very happy. It's my favorite song of the three, and it looks like they're going to take a very direct, strong animation stand here to make you pumped to as to what's coming down the horizon, so that's great. Another thing which is unfortunately something the Japanese audience always says every time is the phrase, and Bleach fans will know this phrase, is the phrase, it looks like a movie. Yeah, I'm sorry guys, the Japanese fans, they, they will never not say that about Bleach. They're just not going to stop saying that. And I'm not here to criticize them for it. It's their view and experience. Because you, you have to give a bit of context here. These individuals are going into a theater in front of a massive, massive screen with the uh, massive speakers and surround sound and they're literally going to a theater and they're watching an anime episode. It's not crazy to understand why they come out of that saying, wow, that was, a, that was such a movie. It's like, of course it was such a movie. They were in a literal movie theater. So I'm not really bothered by the movie statement anymore. We will have to decide for ourselves after being fooled once or twice or whatever. Now, whether they say it or they don't, we're just going to wait to see it ourselves. Number three is we are hearing that the animation did step up, which I'm going to pose that to you to decide exactly what you want to do here. But they say it's going to be good. We're going to have to wait and see if it's true. 
I think that the work that they've done to restructure Piro, rebranding a little bit to Piro films and whatnot, I have a very good feeling that the animation points are true. That's what I think. Okay, so now that I've taken care of that, I want to talk about some of the statements made at the screening. So first, um, the people who were there. Tobinaga was there, Murata was there, Taguchi was there, and Kubo was there. And also the editor, Takahashi. Here's one of the things that we know was set there. So on the subject of which characters will be focused on in the third season, the names that were given were Okitake, Uryu, Basby, Hasfoth, and Ikaku. So let's go through all these names to just talk about them for a second and buckle up because maybe I, I may be yapping for a long time and I apologize if I'm rambling, but we're going to go through this. So number one, Ukitake. Ukitake makes a lot of sense. He, the spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't read the manga, I'm, I'm not going to say any anime spoilers, but if you haven't read the manga, then like turn off now. Anyway, Ukitake obviously is a very important character in Core 3 being the holder and the host of Mimihagi and Mimihagi is going to be forced to come into play once the Soul King is killed. And so I understand why Ukitake is going to be important. And in fact, I expect there to be a ton more characterization, backstory, and focus for Ukitake Jushiro for obvious reasons. Secondly is Uryu Ishida. Now, Uryu has been doing a lot of new things since Thousand Year Blood War started, charting his entire journey going over to that side. We don't quite know exactly what his motivations are because Kubo is changing a lot of things. And the fact that Uryu went up against a Royal Guard member, obviously he didn't win, but the fact that he was powerful enough to tango with beings on that level is reason enough to show you that things are going to go differently from what you assume. And so the fact that we're going to Core 3, where all signs point to Uryu being the one to save the Shutstaffel from Senjimaru's Bankai, I'm looking very much for Uryu versus Senjimaru, Uryu versus Ichigo, and whatever else he might be doing in the Core. So Uryu makes 100% sense why there's going to be focus on him. There should be. Next, Baz B. This is also a very obvious choice. Baz B is going to have a very important subplot, subsection of this arc for his rivalry with Jugo, or uh, Jugo Mahashvall, to say. And to me, that makes perfect sense. The French sub-arc is one of the parts of the manga that I believe don't really need any changes whatsoever. It just needs to be adapted properly. It just needs proper animation and so forth. The content of the French sub-arc is almost perfect. It's Kubo at his absolute best. I don't think we need to change anything. And so the fact that Basby gets some stuff, that's great. The next character here is Hasfold. Obviously, Hasfold's incredibly important. He's the shadow, the other half of Yuha Baha, recipient to the Almighty also, and he has a very sterling rivalry with um, Basby. And so I'm looking forward to that. Makes perfect sense. The last one, which is extremely odd, and I have no idea what they're going to do with this, is Ikaku. Why? Why would they say Ikaku? What's Ikaku going to do? Ikaku hasn't done anything in Bleach for years. Like, Ikaku hasn't been relevant to Bleach since his battle against Edorod, where we saw him use his Bankai for the first time. He has literally not been relevant since then. So the fact that he's going to be focused on... Let me make something clear here. I'm happy that he's going to be focused on, because I like Ikaku, and it bothers me that he was thrown to the wayside. And so Ikaku is about to go on a redemption arc here to revitalize the character to be as important as he should be, as he needs to be. That's great for me. I'm Because th I'm thinking about it, and it's, it's really confusing for me, because when I think about the manga, and I think about the opportunities that we have to make Ikaku look better, I am thinking of Ikaku when Kenpachi was put into Mayuri's healing tank while Mayuri is fighting against Pernita right before Kenpachi wakes up to go fight Gerard Valkyrie. I imagined that if Kubo wanted to give Ikaku one last great moment, he should have scripted a scene where Yumichika and Ikaku have to protect the healing pod that Kenpachi is in while a bunch of Quincy soldiers are trying to kill Kenpachi while he's down and then have Ikaku stand his ground. You know, Yumichika probably gets beat and it's just Ikaku fighting tooth and nail against thousands and thousands of Quincy opposition to protect his captain. And right at the last second, right when they're about to overpower Ikaku after he's tried everything, he's used his Bankai, he's used like everything, even giving him like a really cool flashback between the relationship between him and Kenpachi, like right there at the 11th hour, Kenpachi wakes back up and saves his third seat 
and his most trusted follower. That would be perfect. But are we even covering that in this core? I don't even know. So this is going to be extremely interesting for us to see where this goes. Because I have an idea for how Ikaku can, Ikaku can be important, but that would have been for core four, not core three. So watch this space, could be important. There's a statement from Taguchi where he says that Taguchi asked to focus on Baz B from the beginning of a core two and asks the audience to focus on him in the third core. So essentially this is describing the fact that Taguchi has had his eye and has been building to this Baz, uh, to this Jugo focus since the beginning of Core 2, which honestly, there were a lot of extra moments given to the relationship between Jugrim and Uryu that weren't there in the manga, and it's all to build towards the time when Jugo finally takes the stage. That's great in my opinion. Good on you, Taguchi. Next, we have a statement from Taguchi and Murata talking about the production of the anime. So they expressed that they're happy about the completion of the first two episodes, being that that's exactly what the audience just saw. They explained that starting with this season, they decided to separate the roles of director into Murata and general series director into Taguchi in order to maintain quality, which has led to an increase in the number of staff. See, this is an important thing that I think we need to discuss. You see, the whole Taguchi shtick that you see me do it's all fun in games. I play a character. It's meant to be fun to give you guys something that you can sink your teeth into. We can just laugh about it and move on. That's. I really hope that you guys don't actually think that I'm this obsessed with an individual. Like, I'm sorry. Like, let's leave the fantasy world, come to the real world. Regardless, though, I believe that Piro Films, or rather just Studio Piro to begin with, needed to restructure the studio somewhat to combat the problems that they were facing. And their answer was to rebrand and have this sub-studio, whatever it's called, whatever determination you want to give it, they created a sub-studio, they called it Pure Films. I think Tominaga, in the last, the last time Tominaga, our producer, was talking to the media, he mentioned that part of the reason why he rebranded it as Pure Films is because films have a very strong reaction to people when they hear it, which is associated with high quality. And so it was very deliberate on their part to use the word films as pure films and so they're gunning for higher quality so the next thing that they did after having pure films then is to say to Mahisa Taguchi you who was once a director we're now making you a series general series director and now Murata is the general director some people well not general director just standard director some people use that and have your jokes do whatever you want that's fine I do believe that you have to arrive at this central truth though Taguchi is still doing a ton and the fact that Murata is now doing more direction means he's going to be doing less storyboarding, which then releases something like Dali Chen, who's now assuming Murata's old position to do more stuff. Because Murata may not be a good storyboarder, and I don't think he's that great at it, but I do think he's a decent director when he doesn't have to storyboard. And so um, by restructuring the, the hierarchy within the studio, it would seem that they've been able to get more staff, which then when you contextualize that, with the feedback we're getting from the Japanese audience. And then when you compare that with the feedback from the Japanese audience claiming that things have stepped up and the quality has increased, all of this stuff makes sense. It makes sense to me. Rebrand your studio, restructure your hierarchy, hire more people, get more time, be more streamlined, do better work. Makes sense to me. So we're gonna we're gonna see exactly how this will be manifest once we ourselves can lay our eyes on the content. So good stuff so far. Let's move on. We got a bit more information on how involved Kubo is in the anime. For example, when it came to Senjimaru's Bankai, instead of doing what Kubo used to do, which is, I guess, just give ideas, give up setup pages and comments and whatnot, he drew full-blown storyboards. Kubo decided to get even more hands-on and just straight up drew storyboards. And it's something that has been progressing so far because in the first core, Kubo wasn't really doing storyboards. He was giving comments, he was checking stuff, he was drawing concepts and character designs and whatever, but he wasn't doing anything as involved as storyboards. You move into Core 2, towards the end, you find that Kubo is now more inclusive. I would not be surprised if once we go into Core 3, especially we have our first example actually, Ichibei's um, Bankai, Kubo drew the sh like Kubo drew the updated shrine, and, and I don't know if I, I'll be able to get you guys the picture, but Kubo drew the updated shrine 
with the distance between each bay and the shrine itself and the general premise of how like how far around the shrine goes how big the entire space is like kubo drew new stuff he drew full-blown storyboards to allow the team to be able to better adapt what he has in his head and I believe there was a comment from Taguchi saying he particularly liked that Kubo got more hands-on because if Kubo can give a storyboard, it's no longer up for interpretation, which is something that a lot of people don't understand or realize about the animation process, is that the reason why you need directors is so you can keep the visions consistent. But with a storyboard trick from Kubo, it's like, this is what it is, this is what we want, do it. And so there was a comment from Taguchi saying he, he liked the fact that Kubo could offer storyboards and it was open and wants Kubo to give to do more so that we can better realize the dream and the imagination that he has for his work. Moving on to conversations regarding 3D technology, yes, there's going to be a lot of 3D in this. And I believe that whenever people hear 3D, they, they kind of go crazy. And I, I get it, but I also don't get it because... People complained about CGI usage in Thousand Year Blood War, and then they saw the Ichibei Bankai scene, which is majority of it is basically 3D CGI, and it turned out to be freaking great. And people are like, yeah, um, the 3D that Bleach usually uses looks pretty damn good. I, I say we just wait and see what they're going to do, because I have faith that it's going to look very good. I do. And so I think that covers everything. And so before I go, I just want to give... If you're a Bleach fan, listen to this. I want to give you just a, a word of advice here about Bleach coming up. Keep an open mind. It's important to keep an open mind. I will not determine or decide how you should enjoy a show that you have loved for so long. It's not my place to do so, and I won't do it because it's not right. But you have to understand that you need to keep an open mind to what it is that's going to happen. We're going into uncharted territory. They're going to be included in a ton of new things. Some of them you'll like. Some of them, I guarantee, you probably won't like. But this is Kubo. Kubo is at the helm here. Taguchi may be writing the scripts along with, um, uh, I've forgotten the name of the of the side writer. Um, but they're there working on the scripts. Kubo is there with them. Whatever, whatever decision they make story-wise, whether you agree or disagree, you have to contextualize it with the fact that Kubo is there. They don't do things if Kubo doesn't want them to. And the only thing, and if Kubo is willing to budge on anything, it's because Kubo doesn't think it's that important after all. And so, please, Bleach fans around the world, I want you to get excited for what's to come. They obviously heard the criticisms. They obviously realized that Core 2, in many ways, was not quite enough for what Bleach needed to be. And they adapted. They changed things. Now, I don't think Core 2 was as bad as people make it out to be, but I 100% realize that for Bleach, we need you to be better. And it would seem that they've heard that criticism. Opening 2 was not really, it, was, it wasn't well animated, it wasn't well storyboarded, and the theme of Opening 2 just wasn't that interesting. It would seem that they threw that away, and now we're headed into Opening 3, where we're returning to more of our roots, a more stable more explosive, expressive, dynamic, well-animated opening with a very cool song to boot. I want to see change. I want to see them do better on things they did bad before. And as long as I can see those changes, I'll be happy to give them the benefit of the doubt because it's hard. It's just genuinely that difficult. If the Bleach haters, and make no mistake, some of them are haters, get their hand on Bleach content before it's officially released, and start dooming and you see it come across your timeline or you see it come across your social spaces, please exercise restraint. Some of these people, some of these leakers, they're not pro bleach. They are not interested in pursuing or they're not interested in pushing bleach's fame forward. No, they're interested in bringing you down and robbing you of the joy that you should have going into core three of a thousand year blood war anime that we never really knew would ever happen. So, I'm going to leave you guys there with that. I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you have thoughts, because if you do, leave them down in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next Rebirth video. Guys, Bleach is coming back, and I got a lot of stuff in store for you, so if you don't want to miss anything, better subscribe. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.